Hello everybody and welcome once again to New Pneumaticraft Repressurize and Minecraft 115. Today we're going to turn this drone into a plastic maker or plastic sheet maker. Um, there's been a few changes to the mod. I've upgraded to version.84, so it's 15284. And it's got some nice features in there, so let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to look at is the memory stick. This has actually been fixed. So now you can right click in there and it actually auto absorbs XP. It didn't last time, it was just um, on and not absorbing XP. But so we can actually shift this in the air now. So if you just uh, shift left click it, I think it says off and on. In fact, you don't have to shift it, just left click it. So I'll leave it on. So the next thing we're gonna have a look at is the programming pieces. Now, if you look here, we have coordinates here as you can see we've got coordinates set up here and it's now showing you uh, in the area piece it's showing you one of the coordinates in fact it will show you both coordinates so for instance if you put in a, a piece here like that you'll get a two coordinates and if you change those to variables you can change these to variables for example like this you'll see that they're both listed in here very nice I like that a lot so that helps us with this program. So the first thing we're going to do with this program is we are going to uh, run the program, but only when the remote is set to on, so it's in the running state. So have a look at that. So at the moment it's stopped. So the, this variable here is 000, state is 000. So, so we're going to use that state to start off and say whether or not uh, the program's going to run. So let's get out the piece that we need, which is a coordinate comparator type piece. Let's press tab on that one. And it will probably be this one. Condition item filter. No, sorry. This one. Coordinate. Condition coordinates. So we're going to come along here. And the coordinate we're going to set is the state. So we just need a, a piece for this one, a coordinate. We actually need two. We're going to set one of them is like this, and one of them is like this. So one of these variables we're going to set to be in the variable hash state, like this. I probably need to highlight this, enable it first of all. It doesn't show up in these, of course, because it's a global variable. So I'm, so I'm going to just type in hash state. And if the value of that is then equivalent to, it's just the one in the middle here is the Y coordinate, like that. We have a true condition. So what we will do is we will go and do run the main loop here. So the main loop is going to be basically setting up the coordinates, um, showing showing this, updating this time with the coordinates. So we'll have one of these like this, like this, and if it's false, so we'll say, um, we'll call this one main. This is the main program part, isn't it? And this one here, let's drag this across over here. Uh, yes, I need it here, but I've need the, I also need the jump piece, don't I? So let's just get that out as well. So we need the label, and I don't think we need a jump piece. Maybe we do later on. Like that. So that's now linked into this. And then we'll just create another one of these. Or to initialize these variables here like this. And we'll just call this one init, for example. So the main we'll just call it init. It's not ideal what I'm doing here, but it's, it'll work for the time being, like this. And then it's got a kind of error. Yes, we need to set the axis. So what we need to set is everything being equal to. So we need to set all of these equal. So it's then equal to the three values of state. So let's just test this program now, see how it's how it's going to work. Um, and this is nice because it allows us to be able to pick up the to deal with this quickly I'm going to move this GPS tool out of the way and I think I don't need the memory stick either so let's just do it like this and pick up these now I've changed this back again so I have to remember to program it like this and let's just put it down so what it should do is it should initialize these variables like that and if we have a look at the program now, and we've got plenty of time because we can we actually opt, turn it on by we're using the remote, so we can do. I think I need the enter to track and might be off. It is yes. So I turn the enter to track on. Let's have a look at the drone debugger, and you'll see it not doing very much. In fact, what it's doing is it's coming down here. It's in the standby message and it's going across here. So this would be condition coordinates should 
be false. Okay. So now let's just turn it on and it should update the sign. See the sign at the moment is zero zero zero. So if we right click this and turn it on, so this should now be updated. And you can see it's actually doing stuff now. So let's have a look at the program again. So it's just updating these states. In fact, as it happens, it's probably not a good thing to do. We'll fix that in a second as well. Because I'd like to update these every time it comes around the loop here. So let's do that as well. All I'm going to do is move this down one block here. Move this to, into this section and come along here like this. Now, of course, this complains because we're not doing anything after this. But these variables should be initialized. So we should be able to see, for example, let's have a look. Um, I suppose the easiest thing is to put the a quick, a quick go to in. Let's do that first of all. Okay, and then we can go to an area piece. And this time we can put a value of a value in here. So for example, we can put a point, but we can also use a variable. So we'll go to the um, cooling chest like this, press escape, and that will should just go to that area and then it'll it'll stop, of course, as it, as it always does. So let's just take the drone again and program him up again. Make sure the program is off. put the drone back in here and program it. I've noticed it's night time. We're going to have a quick sleep because of the noises as you can hear mobs coming around. I'll do that now and come back in a second. But I just saw an enderman got gr got grind by the drones over here and so his legs peel be over here. Let's have a quick look at this just to be sure. So at the moment it's 13184 as the amount of XP in here. So let's just go and pick up his... Oh, he dropped it in the pool. Yes, indeed. Like that, and have a look at this stick. So now it's 13189, so it's gone up by five little points, which is fine. So now, next thing, I haven't done anything with this yet, but we'll let's have a look at this. In fact, most of the loop is going to get start up here, isn't it? It's the main loop here. So I haven't programmed the drone in yet, so just make sure we program the drone in. Put it down like this. I don't want to put this together at the end of the pole. I'm putting in. No, I don't need to do that. So let's get him debugged and let's have a look at what he's doing. So as you can see, he's just updating the sign. He'll have initialized the variables because um, this is the false ca case and they don't change. So we should become along here. So it should then go to the cooling chest when we turn it on. So let's do that. Run. Um, yes, he's not actually going to the cooling chest. <laughs> oh, why not? It might be that it's a bad place. And I probably would like to go to one block above it. Let's just do that and make sure that is actually the case. Because normally what I'm doing here is I'm actually going and importing stuff from this cooling chest. In fact, what we want to import in the cooling chest is a bucket. So let's just bring down the GPS tool here. That's all we need to do for that one. Then we can break the slime block and then just pro change this program to use that uh, I'll pick up the drone first of all as well let's get this out of the way oops right click it left clicking doesn't help so right so we're going to use this coordinate so I'm just going to use this coordinate here instead of that one I should be able to just update it like that and then program the drone and make sure that's the case. I'm not going to reuse that coordinate later on, so that should be fine. So let's put it down again. And this time, you see, as you can see, it then goes to the chest here. I didn't stop the program, by the way, as you noticed, because we're going to carry on with the program now. So this time it did go to that space. If you can, I can show you both of these as it happens. So the chest piece would be, let's highlight that cooling chest. We should be able to right click this one and, and, and preview it. So we should be able to see it's in here. Uh, maybe you'd have to open it. No, 
I can't see it in there actually so let's just try this one can we preview I oh, didn't move did I not click the preview area oh maybe because it's a point I'm not 100% sure let's just preview this one yeah you can see where it is in this case good so now we're going to carry on <laughs> right so the first thing we need to do with this is to see whether or not the drone has got a bucket if the drone has got a bucket we're going to we're going to go to um some plastics but the first thing we'll do is go to we'll get rid of this we don't need it anymore that's done with so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check whether the drone has got a an inventory item in it so let's press tab and we need to get this one out here drone items here so the condition we're going to check for is an empty bucket so let's just i've actually got an empty bucket here so let's drag this one along here like that and then we're going to um if it has got an empty if it hasn't got an empty bucket here we're going to collect a bucket so we need another one of these labels we need a um import bucket text so let's just bring in one of these like this we'll say import bucket like that so we're then going to go uh, to a chest and import the, the bucket let's press tab on that one so we should be able to come to a chest where's the import one export to inventory import from inventory here so we want to import into this one and the place we're going to import is the um chest location so we need a, an area piece and we're going to program this area piece with a with a um with the cooling chest variable like this so it should then go to the cooling chest um and to import from there an empty bucket so we need the empty bucket again like this so this is in fact the, tr the false case if it hasn't got an empty bucket we're going to go here and import it so the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> that should work we can test that in a second but i want to make sure i've got enough time not to do that so the next thing we want to do is we want to check whether the processing plant has actually got in it um plastic so we need now a condition for fluid so let's press tab and look for fluid so we should be able to see here's the condition here that's whether the drone's got fluid in well we don't care about that we would care about whether or not a location has got a fluid in it so the location we want is the processing thermoneumatic processing plant which I've actually got here again this is just a variable you can see here I don't think I need to set both sides up and then we need a, a fluid count in here so we need to set up molten plastic and we need to set it as being more than 1000 in fact what we'll do is we'll set it up to being less than no, we'll set it more than 1,000, then we know we can carry on. The direction's up, as you can see, which is fine. I'll just turn off the preview area because it should preview. Maybe it doesn't work so well with variables, I'm not sure. So if it hasn't got a plastic in it, which is actually the case we want to do something with, and in fact we were going to do nothing. So let's just take this out of here. So it's got no plastic. So we'll label this one as no plastic. So that's where we're going to come from if it's false. I hope I've got enough space here. I just have to move things around a little bit. Like that. Let's drag this across like this. So the condition is no plastic. We come along here. And all I'm going to do with this is to set another uh, a variable up. And we're going to set this plastic operator here. Uh, this is the plastic variable. And what we're going to say with it, this one, we're just going to do nothing. We're just going to call it plastic. Uh, in fact, I it doesn't show up in here, but uh, very willing. I didn't type. I'll try again. Okay. So we're not going to do anything with plastic. We're going to clear it because it's got no plastic. If, on the other hand, it's true, we're going to set this plastic piece to having a value of 1. So we'll just do it like this. We'll just set this to being constants one one one. 
try again, I think. <laughs> okay, turn off preview error, don't need that. So then it sets the plastic to being true. This, we don't need this, this is not part of it. We need this here, so we do something, and otherwise we don't do anything. Okay, so let's see how this works now. I think that's a reasonable point, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the universal sensor to check the temperature of the cooling um, chest. So I think that'll do for the time being. Let's get the drone and program him up again. It's a good idea to, when you're programming these things to do it not in be warned go because it's hard to debug. Um, so we can just put it down. Let's just check the remote first of all. Are we running? Let's stop it. I stopped. Let's put the drone down. And let's just enable the debug mode on this one first of all before we do anything else. And you can see it's going through the update sign. Now let's turn it on. Run. So it should go and pick up a chest. Now, I mean a bucket from in here. It hasn't got a bucket in there. I'll take these two 32 bits of plastic out of there and put one bucket in. And you'll see that the drone immediately goes and picks it up. Now it's checking for plastic. So at the moment, we've got no plastic in the output here. As you can see in the thermonumatic processing plant, if I can click over the right, I can. I've got no plastic. So let's just turn this on for a few seconds and get some plastic in there. Um, have a look. The wrong one. I can actually use this. So you see the temperature is going up, and as soon as the temperature gets to 100, it should then start to produce plastic. So we'll turn this off like that. And then the drone shouldn't do much except for in, turn this one on here saying we've got plastic, which is exactly what we have. So we look at the program again. You'll see it's coming down here saying it's got plastic. And in fact, it's going down through this one because it's the next stage in the list. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not this chest here, where has it gone to, it's got a temperature of less than 100, minus 100 degrees. Okay, and for that we can use the universal sensor. And I've got in here a block tracker upgrade. I've got in here a GPS tool. And this GPS tool, if I put it in my hand here, it should show us up. Like that which block it's actually talking about so it's talking about the chest here the universal sensor I haven't I'm not going to cover today because it will take too long let's put that back again and I've set the temperature to here to be minus 100 and then on the redstone behavior I've set it to inverted so this this redstone block here this redstone dust will only turn on when it's minus 100 so i actually need to i haven't put that in the variables yet let's put that in the variable here and it's night time again so i'll have a quick sleep and come back in a second and i also set up a sentry turret over here which will deal with all of these mobs around here like that in fact you can see it, there's also there's also a guard drone dealing with those as well so I'm not going to be getting attacked so much from when I'm doing when I'm working at night. Well, there's still a few mobs around. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use that coordinate that we've got here. And I didn't set up the coordinates, so let's just do that item assignment here, like this. No wrong one. I need the coordinate assign operator here. And the variable we're going to use for this one is going to be the um, let's call it the sensor one heat sensor let's call it heat sensor okay and then we're just going to program it according to this point we've got here so like that so now heat sensor is set up so what we're going to come along and do now is to see whether or not that heat sensor has got a redstone value so let's just press tab and look for the redstone so this is a condition here, the redstone piece. So we put this at the bottom of that, and then we're going to say we are checking for the heat sensor. So let's just drag drag this one across. Uh, yeah, the area piece is what I want, don't I? Not that one. Like this. And just put in heat sensor here. Okay. 
I only need to specify one point port. So what we're going to check is whether this value is more than or equal to one. So the false condition here isn't is too hot. So we're going to put in another label here and say this one's hot. If I can spell that. And we're going to simply reproduce this bit down here like this. Exactly as we had it before. This time instead of we're going to we're not going to use the plastic variable, we're going to use the another variable. We'll call this one cooling. Um Let's call it cold. Okay, the variable's now cold. Um, I think that might not work. I need to call it cooling because I've used this one in here. So let's just call it cooling. Okay, so it's so it's cold enough. In other words, so this one's going to be cleared. If it's if it's hot enough, we're going to simply take this piece here like this, put it on the bottom of this. So it's going to fall through here, and we're going to set the value to being 1, 1, 1, like we did with the, this one. So at this point in time, we know that this chest is cold enough. Um, we can do something smart here as well. What we can also do is we can right-click the lever on the... Th I'll show you which one I'm talking about. We'll right-click this lever here, and then that turns this on. So let's do that as well, because then it turns it on. And we have to turn it off as well. But we'll do that in a second. So we've set cooling to being off here. So we now need to right click a block. So the right click block is this one here. And what we're going to do right click is we want to right click the lever. So let's just bring in another area piece in here like this. And the one we're going to call is we're going to call this as the cooling lever. So let's just find the cooling lever in the slot like that and that should turn it on but there's another condition to this we should do this uh, differently what we should do is we should test whether or not again this has got a redstone value so let's just bring this redstone value over here so if it's already on we don't want to click it do we so it would be, would be um, bad to do that so if it's more than one it's going to go through here so then it's already on if it's colder than that let's just jump to here and let's go um let's give it a name what should we call this one we shall turn on cooling on so if it's if it's uh, more than one it's already on if it's not then we'll t turn it off so we'll go cooling like that so, so what I'm you see what I'm doing here so it's getting a bit here and I mean if obviously we need to specify the area so the, the area for this one is also the cooling lever of course so if the cooling lever is on we don't do anything if it's off we turn it on by right clicking it that should work next thing we're going to do so at this stage we've got plastic in here and it's cold enough so we're then going to um, take a bucket that we've got in our hands and pick it up from the um, thermoneumatic processing plant one bucket of um, one bucket of liquid molten plastic so to do that we need again we need a right click so thing here so this one here is a right click it's a right click an item I think I have to change this to right click block we'll, we'll, we'll check it out in a second in fact I think this is actually called right click it used to be called right click block in the previous version so now it's just a right click um, and the difference between block and item is it will right click something with your hand now this doesn't work because you can't right click this one's an item so you would want to right click using a bucket on this thermoneumatic processing plant that doesn't work so the way uh, vanilla minecraft works so at this stage what we want to do is to take this this one here like this oops i don't want to do that I want to drag it i want to just want this one so i want to right click the um thermoneumatic processing plant which is this one here like this and with a bucket with the bucket will be the first thing you've got in your inventory so the first thing we do is pick up an empty bucket like this and then when it has right clicked it what we're going to do is we're going to export this into a chest so let's press tab 
and then we've got export inventory here so the one we're going to export is a bucket of molten plastic of course so we'll do a we'll be sure that we have a bucket of molten plastic which is this item in here uh, so we need to search not have an inventory we need to search um could actually get one search item so we'll just say molten and you actually just come straight to that one like this and I only want to exp I should only export one so when I import this here we shall make sure that we use a use count of one and it's coming from the top as well that's the other thing that's important so we're actually going to export this into the cooling chest there we go like this uh, and then that's it basically I don't think we need to do anything else after that except for when it's run out of plastic here uh, and we've got no plastic what we're going to do here is the exact opposite of this so f here we've got this um, redstone condition here so what we're going to do is we, if it's this particular thing is on so let's grab this it's the same thing it's the same piece for the cooling lever here like this if it's on we're going to turn it off so we basically do just replicate this whole block here we we'll just give it a different name so we'll say instead of cooling on we'll call it cooling off like that um the one we're going to click is the same lever cooling lever like that so we just need this one coming along here like that and then so that's going across there so you're seeing there's a little bit of symmetric symmetry in this program here um, I think that's all we need to do so let's give it a test let's go and get the drone of course it's very easy to see because it's highlighted <laughs> to be honest with you I don't know whether the drone's male or female so it's just really an it isn't it so let's just put one bucket in here like this let's make sure the program is off I could even stop it in fact you can set the state from somewhere else let's put the drone in here and you'll see how much easier it is now with these um, area pieces having a label on it makes life a lot easier because it's really hard to remember before I was having a bit of trouble with that wasn't I okay let's put the drone down let's enable it up again with the um, debugger entity tracker in this case and let's turn on the program so at this stage this just check what it's got in here it's actually got eight buckets of plastic this is off so I think we're ready to go so let's just um, turn the turn the program on run and let's press control and U and see what it's doing so so now we've probably have to follow the widget a bit there we go so now it's coming along here and this chest should be cooling down in fact you can see this is going blue which means it's cooling down so this is now on this lever you see it's sitting on top of the lever and as soon as this reaches minus 100 degrees it will carry on in fact I think, I think we don't need to debug it at this stage we can just leave it to run through like this and wait for it to reach the temperature what I've also done here is I've set this as a restriction of being 0.6 bar now that has two effects actually one of the effects is it generates less lag but also this doesn't cool down so fast there it's got it so it's got enough now so it come along here and it's put it in here we've got two pieces of plastic it's picked up the bucket again as you can see ready for the next time this is still now too warm so as soon as it goes cold we can probably come over here and have a look at it from this side we'll see this this go along and it picking up another um there it goes another plastic putting it into the tank and the ground we go again so this will happen another eight times oh another six times now so it it's nice because and then when, then when it's finished it should turn this off now i can speed this up again because it's night time yet again by taking out of here um taking out of here the plastic so let's have a look at it in the first place so you see now it's got five bu buckets but what I'll do is I'll have a quick sleep and I'll come back in a second when it's down to one bucket
Well, there's quite a lot going on, even though it's daytime. <laughs> this zombie is targeting me. I'm very surprised if it gets anywhere near me. In fact, what I'll probably do is I'll probably set up a, a, a dr another drone. Maybe we'll write a quick program after this one uh, and just go around the area, just picking up anything that's in this area <laughs> that's been dropped by mobs. Handy sometimes, but I didn't check how many pieces of plastic we've got in here, by the way. I was going to do that, wasn't I? So we're down to two buckets now. So I'll see when it's put down to one bucket. No, in fact, it won't take very long. We'll just... Yeah. There it goes. Picks it up. There's a little bit of delay from the sense, the universal sensor. In fact, this should be the last... Is it the last bucket now? Yeah, there's one more bucket to pick out of here. So when it's done that, it will then turn off this. We shall wait for it to do this. How much temperature has got that? 99, there we go. So now it's the last bucket. There's no more in here. So then it should come along here, and it should turn off the lever. I think it might be waiting for this to go to minus 100 degrees. I'm not sure why. Let's have a look. Um shouldn't be doing that so there's nothing in here so that's empty this redstone over here should be off and it's on oh yes because of course it's waiting for this to get to minus 100 but the plastic should have been emptied out let's have a look at the program and follow the active widget just to get it a little bit higher so we can see what's going on So it's got molten plastic, it should be going along here, and it should have turned off the lever. Uh, because, of course, yes. <laughs> Slight bug, this one here should be the other way around. Let's just pick it up, the drone up. Uh, yes, let's pick up the drone. We can carry on from where we've put it on as it happens. Come along here. I don't need that in here, do I? So the mistake I made was this one, plastic. So I'm saying if it's if it's on, then we should turn it on, but that's wrong. It needs to be turned off. So I need it to be zero or less. Because I'm looking for the false conditions, aren't I? So that we turn it off. So less than or equal to zero. If that's true, it goes doesn't do anything, goes over here. If it's false, it comes along here and then turns it off. That's all we should need to do. Let's just program up the drone again. Let's put the bucket back into this chest, like this. And let's put the drone on top of it, on the chest. It doesn't really matter where you put it, of course. So it should just simply come along here and pick up this item in here, or is it not doing so? Let's turn it on. Should have picked up the it should have picked up the bucket. I'm not sure why it hasn't done. So let's just follow the would you bring it up a bit higher? Cooling chest. <laughs> okay, let's put I can't unfortunately what I can't do here is to put one bucket of plastic in here. Um because it's got the, the plastic in here and it must be going slightly wrong. I'll tell you what, I'll check this out in a sec back in a second. Well, I haven't changed the program, but it has actually worked. I heard it, I heard it do its business. Uh, in fact, what's happened, this is now cooling, this should be now warming up. Let's just do that again. I had to restart the program from the beginning again because it didn't carry on from where it was. So all I had to do basically was come along here, stop it like this. Put the drone down because I wanted to debug it anyway. Check what it's doing. Let's get it highlighted, and then let's look at the program. And you see, it's just going around here. Um, it wants the first thing it should have done is to import a bucket from in here, and I don't quite know why it didn't. But it doesn't matter very much because we're going to then now activate the program, and this time it goes and picks up the bucket, like like this. In fact, let's turn that on. Does it actually turn it off? Yeah, and indeed it does turn it off, as, it, as you would expect it to do, and this is where it's finished. And it does have the bucket in its hand. So this is now cooling down. And the program, 
let's have a look at what the program is doing. It's simply going through here the whole time. So it's checking whether it's got any plastic. It hasn't got any plastic. It's making sure that the, the lever's off. So that's perfect. And let's just follow the widget. I used to be able to drag this. And I, I should ask. Yeah, I should have forgot to ask about that. Um, as you can see, it's just going through these loops. So that's it. I think that's the, the plastic maker done. And you'll see in this time it's got these updated. They were updated to cold, as you probably noticed that anyway. Last time. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, next time, I will probably carry on. I would like to have a look at doing iteration through um, or coordinates and maybe iteration through items. Anyway, until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.